So in contrast to subjacency, which was a, a theory that said, okay, here's how syntactic islands work. You just know that there are these fixed set of bounding nodes in your language. You have to kind of figure out which ones they are, but you know you have them and you know you can't cross two or more of them. So a more recent theory looked at something they called subjacency-ish for reasons that hopefully will become clear. But the idea was that a dependency can't cross a very low probability region of structure rather than being like a fixed, you know, two or more is bad. Just if you hit a low probability region, that's sad. And the way that you think about regions of structure is as dependencies uh, represented as a sequence of things which we'll call container nodes. So this is really getting at different aspects of the acquisition process, like how you are parsing, how you were thinking about the constraints on your hypothesis space and what other systems of probabilistic reasoning you might be using. So, okay, so let's look at this more closely, right? If this is our dependency, what did you see where you have the WH word what and its gap is down here in the matrix clause, which will represent here, IP stands for sentence, right? For inflectional phrase and noun phrase and verb phrase and we have a pronoun you, right? And this is the general label for when you have questions called a complementizer phrase, which reasons we won't go into, but suffice it to say, all of our questions will be headed with that. But the basic idea is this, what phrases is the gap inside but the WH word isn't like, what phrases do you have to go through to get to the gap, right? So here, the ones we have to go through, it's like, okay, we're already, we're already in this one. We're children, we're children of CP here. So, okay, we're already in CP, but we have to go through the IP, through the VP, and then we finally get to our little gap guy here. So the way to represent this dependency is as a sequence of these little node guys, in this case, as a sequence IP, VP, okay? sort of flattening it out. And you can do this for a lot of different dependencies, in fact, all different dependencies, right? So here is what happened. Again, you have the noun phrase, you know, in this case, it's a WH noun phrase, but what and then happened, right? And the gap is here, right? So what do you have to go through to get to that gap? You're like, well, I'm already here, so I have to go through the IP to find the gap, right? Right, and let's, so that's how I, I can represent it simply as IP. Now we have this longer one, what did she want to do, right? Well, actually you have to, you know, what is hooking up with the gap down here? You have to go through quite a number. You have to go through IP and then VP and then IP and then VP again until finally you get to your gap. And let's just do one more. So what did she read from? Okay, so going through our IP, read is our verb phrase, and then the prepositional phrase from until we finally get to our gap. So this is how, in some sense, we're flattening out the structure to be just a sequence of these phrasal, these structural nodes, right, that in some sense contain the dependency, right? That's container nodes. And so these are really our two different theories, and the subjacency is, again, one is that you're talking about uh, a restriction on crossing a low probability region of structure where you're defining these in terms of sequences of container nodes and these are just flattening out right so what do you like becomes IP VP because these are these structures that contain the gap and that is your basic idea